In today's video, I'll be covering advanced machining techniques that you can implement on a hobby CNC. These are techniques that I've learned on my industrial CNCs where I'm producing thousands of products every single week, but we've scaled it back for hobby CNCs. So today we'll be cutting out a project and I'll be taking you step by step through each tool path, telling you why I'm doing it and how it not only saves you time, but also money in your shop. Let's go. We'll be cutting the project today out of a simple walnut board and we'll be using multiple different bits and tool changes. Now this is not the fastest way to cut out a single project, but I guarantee you it's the fastest way to cut out multiple of the same exact project. So while you're watching, if you can just take away some nugget of information, whether it's on the very first tool path we do or the very last, that is the goal. So I'm trying to put as much advanced information as possible for you guys in this video. So the very first tool path we're gonna be running is with a point cutter roundover. Now I used to do this second to last pass, but I'm gonna start doing this first. And the reason being is it's actually going to break the grain of the walnut. And so when we do our very last pass and come by with this up cut, it's not gonna have any grain tear out. So let me show you how we program that and then we'll cut it out, then we'll move on to the next tip. And at the end of the video, I'll show you one of our programs that we run on our industrial CNCs it's gonna blow your mind. Let's go. We'll be making a tray today out of this puzzle piece. And so in order to make it a tray, we're just going to offset it inwards that half inch. And let me show you a couple quick setup tips as I straighten out this vector right here. So whenever we do that inset, we create a whole bunch of nodes, which could be a ton of G code for the machine. So we're just gonna click this curve fit right here and select BZ ear curves. There's a tolerance and that's going to take away all of those extra nodes which are gonna slow down the machine. The next thing we're going to do is put a fillet or fillet on these corners over here. Now, we will be using a three quarter inch bowl and tray, so most of the time you would say do a .375 radius fillet, but it's actually better if you go bigger, and I'll show you why later whenever we get to the bowl and tray section of this video. And so boom, all of those are now done. Now we are ready to do the point cutter roundover programming. This setup part is very important. Now to correctly set up this point cutter roundover, we're going to come inwards 0 0.03 inches on the inside vector and outwards 0 0.03 inches on that vector as well. Then we're going to hop over here and run a profile tool path on the new vectors that we just created and we're going to do it with our farm tool, which is our point cutter bit on the line running at 60 inches a minute and 30 inches on the plunge rate. And we're going to do that in one pass. Nothing crazy here, a simple ramp. And when that round over is done, it should look like this. just did by rounding over all those edges is we're going to prevent tear out on future tool paths. Now I used to do this last, but sometimes you get a little bit of chip out. And so we'll come back with this point cut around over, or sometimes we'll use like a chamfer with a 60 or 90 degree V bit. And you can do those edges right there, just like we did that point cutter. So the next series of tool paths we will be running are roughing tool paths using a roughing bit and why we use a roughing bit as opposed to finishers or just continuing to use a bowl and tray bit is because a roughing bit has those serrated edges, so it's meant to last longer, it's meant to hog out material, it has three flutes, so the core is actually thicker than two flute bits, and so you can actually run it a little faster. So the first two roughing tool paths we'll be running is to clear out all this material in this pocket right here of the bowl, so whenever this bowl and tray bit comes back by later in the video, it can do its thing and everything is nice and clean. So we'll be running a step down tool path and then a pocket clear out using some different offsets. So let me go show you how to program that, then we'll run it. Now to set up the roughing that's going to go inside of the puzzle, we're going to take that original vector and we're going to inset it inwards 
a quarter of an inch. And the reason I'm doing that is because our bowl and tray bit has a quarter inch round over on it. And so we wanna inset that the same as that round over. Now we're going to create two different tool paths from this vector and this vector right here. The first one is going to be what I call a step down. And all it is is a profile inside the line of that point cutter round over bit that we just ran. So we're going to go inside the line and we're going to cut down a quarter of an inch because the final depth of the bowl is going to be a half inch and our bowl and tray bit has a quarter inch radius. So we wanna go half of the depth and account for that quarter inch radius. Then we'll switch over to our Golden Boy Upcut Rougher and I'll be running this at 150 inches a minute, 70 on the plunge, at a slight ramp. And this is what that rougher step is going to look like. It's just going to take a little step down. So we just did that step down with that inside profile. Then we're going to do that pocket clear out right there. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which order. This is just the order I'm doing in the video, just an FYI. But what does matter is if you like and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. Now we'll make the pocketing tool path to take out that center. Now we'll take the inside vector that we inset a quarter of an inch, run a pocket tool path with that Golden Boy Upcut Rougher and our finished depth is going to be 0.5. So we actually want to run this about a 30 second over that or 0.47 inches. And I'll be running this Golden Boy again pretty fast at 150 inches a minute. You can go faster, can go slower, totally up to you. Simple ramp. So now we have that rougher coming in and taking out all of that center right there. And so now we have the step from the rougher step right there and then the rougher pocket taking out all the insides. And if you're a color person, this is what it looks like right now. Round overs in red, rougher steps in green, and rougher pocket is in blue. So that roughing step down and the roughing pocket did exactly what they were supposed to do. And once again, it's just removing a lot of that material so this bit doesn't have as hard of a time. And you can easily see that ledge right there on how this bit does not have to work as hard. Now the next tool path we'll be running is a roughing profile on the outside using an onion skin. What we're going to do is do the roughing profile on the outside, but leave an onion skin that's like an eighth inch thick. Typically, I would only do it like a 16th of an inch thick and it would you know, just barely hold in there. But since we're still coming back with that bowl and tray bit taking out material, I'm gonna leave it a little bit thicker and it's gonna almost act as like a giant tab to still hold it structurally in place so this thing does the best job possible. So let me show you that outside roughing profile and then we'll move on to the next tool path. Now to do the roughing profile cut, we're not going to select the original vector we're actually going to select the same vector that that point cutter bit ran on with that 0 0.03 offset. We're gonna do a simple profile tool path outside the line and we're going to leave an eighth inch of material thickness. And since my material is 0.875 inches, we're going to only cut down 0.75 inches to leave that thick onion skin. Here are my settings and I'm actually running it just a little bit slower because it is taking off that full width on that profile. I'll add a slight ramp to it. And whenever that rougher runs, it's going to do all of that nice work. And so you can now start to see our puzzle piece start to shape up here. All right, so that outside profile just got done. As you can see, that onion skin is really thick. And honestly, since it's so thick, I don't know if it should actually be called an onion skin, maybe like an onion ring. That's so funny. The last time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaur. Let me know down below what we think we should call those thicker onion skins. So now we're gonna put that bowl and tray bit in 
And I'm actually gonna do a pretty advanced thing that we do on our Valentine's hearts that we sell on Amazon. And so what we're going to do is a raster pocket going vertical with the grain, pretty simple, but we're not going to do that last profile pass on it that it usually does. And then we're going to actually do a profile inside the line and go really slow. And after it cuts out, I'll show you exactly why and what it prevents. So let me show you how to program that. Then we'll put this bowl and tray bit in and shine everything up. To cut out the tray section of this puzzle piece, we're going to use two separate tool paths, both on the original vector here, not any of those offset vectors. The first one is just going to be a simple pocket tool path with that three quarter inch bowl and tray. So with this bowl and tray, we're going to increase the cut depth to 0.50 instead of 0.47. And we only need to run one pass because that rougher already took away all the material. Therefore, we can actually speed this up to around 150 inches a minute as well. And let's just say 50 on the plunge and we can decrease this step over to around 10% because we do not want to sand much. I like making a long ramp at this part because I'm worried about it hitting these edges. Now, I remember when I did the fillet at 0.4 instead of 0.375, let me show you why that's important. So whenever this bowl and tray bit is going to run on the inside, on that 375 fillet, if we would have did that, it would have been a sharp corner and that bit kind of stops and it kind of squeaks a little bit but a 0.401, the bit never stops, and it kind of has that nice gradual turn so it doesn't kind of jam up as much. And if you ran a CNC a lot, you know exactly what I'm talking about when it kind of hits that corner. And so just simply, if you provide a slightly bigger radius, it'll have that turn instead of a complete stop, then a turn. So that's why we did a slightly bigger radius. The next thing we want is instead of a offset, we want to do a raster toolpath with a 90 degree angle. That way we're going with the grain direction and we're actually not going to run a profile pass. So we want to select no profile pass. This is very important for this scenario we're doing. No type of allowance, just hit calculate. Now that bowl and tray bit is gonna run just like that, take some off the edge, a little bit off the bottom and do great work. And notice because we did that raster with that 90 degree angle, it's going with the grain of the wood. runs back and forth you'll hear that and now that would be so much worse if we didn't do that little step down with that rougher and so we're taking out all the material that that radius was going to hit that it didn't really need to and notice we can run it a lot faster this way as well now I will say if you can do it with a half inch shank that is going to be better than a quarter inch shank because obviously it's a lot more stable, but a quarter inch shank works just fine at this speed, which is around 120 inches a minute. So the reason we clicked no profile pass on that raster pocket with that bowl and tray is because whatever speed we're gonna do this pocket at, it's going to want to do that final profile pass at. Now, in most cases, this is okay, but in some cases, it rips out the grain because it's going so fast. And so what we've had to do in our production shop is actually do a separate profile inside the line and we'll go half the speed or way slower than that pocket just was and we won't get any tear out because in grain on these trays likes to tear out a lot and that is like the hardest to sand. And so that's what I'm showing you here, but if that doesn't apply to you and it's gonna pocket out just fine, then just include that last profile pass in on it. I just wanna show you kind of what that looks like. Now, if you wanna get any of the bits that you've seen, whether it's the bowl and tray, whether it's the roughing bit, this golden boy upcut rougher right here, or the full gold digger family, which is a down cut, an upcut and an extended cut upcut. Check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. The next toolpath we'll run is off of that same vector, and it's going to be a profile toolpath inside the line that's going to clean up all of that little mumbo jumbo from not running that last profile pass. 
And so what that's gonna look like, it's still gonna cut that half inch deep. We're going to only do one pass with our three quarter bowl and tray inside the line. Now what this is going to do, and we'll see if we run it nice and slow here, it's going to come around and clean up all of those rough edges. Now all those rough edges are nice and clean. So right here, it's gonna take away all these little lines, it's gonna take away those divots, and it's going to come really slow. Like on our industrial ones, we may run this thing at like 300 inches a minute and then come back by at like 30 inches a minute. So it's really unique. Watch, long ramp. So as you can see, that bowl and tray bit right there, it's a super clean edge right there, and there's pretty much no sanding I have to do if I did not want to. If I wanted to, I could just take a little pad, just quickly go in there and get it handled. So that's the power of doing all those different roughing and, and profile and that raster pocket and that small step over, all of those things matter. Now the last thing we're gonna do is run a finishing bit on the outside and you can use an up cut or a down cut. I'm going to use an up cut just to prove to you that none of this is going to tear out because we did that round over at the very beginning of this video, which is super cool. So before I show you that, let me show you one of my complicated programs like I promised you that we run on our industrial CNC's, then we'll get to programming this one. As promised, here is a look at our production file of one of our products, the Piggy Bank. So I wanna show you what each toolpath does and how much work it takes to make piggy banks at scale. So the first toolpath is cutting out the center of the A right here to pocket it down for the acrylic. The next one is a rougher pocket, just like we ran on that bowl and tray. Then we're gonna come back by with a finished pocket to kind of bump it out. Then we switch to a down cut rougher to come across this edge and clear out a little bit of material on the first half inch. Then we'll come back with an upcut rougher for a good chip removal. Since this piggy bank is around inch and three quarters thick, we need to have that upcut bit coming in there. Then we come around with a finished profile to eat away, just like we did on the bowl and tray. Then we're going to add a lip for the acrylic with that same finishing bit that we just ran. Do a coin slot pocket right there. Then finally come around with a 16th of an inch bit to drill screw holes for all of those pieces of acrylic and those piggy banks. Pretty cool, now let's go check out the profile cut. All right, so the last finished toolpath is very simple. We're going to select that original outside vector and just run a profile toolpath outside the line with a quarter inch up cut going all the way through the material. And we only need to do that in one pass just to cut that onion skin off. And we will add a few tabs to it right there, a slight ramp and hit calculate. So what you'll see with that final profile, it's actually gonna take away a little bit of meat. Now everything is nice, neat, and cut out. Now I know that may seem like an overkill, and it is, but any one of these tool paths should be able to help you on your next project. So we just popped this off the CNC and the amount of sanding you actually need is very minimal. So let me show you these edges right here. So we have no tear out on this end grain. And as we rotate it around, even in here, maybe very minimal and we're coming around baby smooth. We have a little bit of tear out right here on this piece. And then you keep circling around and we have just a tad bit right here. Now in the industrial setting, this matters a lot because we do a thousand of these. If it takes an extra minute of sanding, that's really bad. And so these are the techniques that we've used on a massive scale that I hope you can use whenever you wanna cut out multiple of these or you're doing production runs on your CNC. So I hope this video helped. I hope you left with more knowledge than when you started. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.